Welcome to CFI Insider. My name is Melissa Myers and I'm the National Field Organi Organizer for Center for Inquiry and your host for tonight. Thanks for joining us. Tonight we'll be joined by Wafa Bahari, who runs CFI's translations program. Wafa has a PhD degree in linguistics from Graduate Centers SUNY or CUNY. Uh, her research interests cover the areas of sociolinguistics, language revitalization, discourse analysis, language contact, and the interface between these research areas. Wafa teaches introduction to linguistics, bilingualism slash multilingualism, linguistics to TESOL teachers, language and society, second language acquisition, Arabic, and French. At the end of this program, we are going to have a short question and answer session. You can submit your questions at any time during the presentation using the question and answer function at the bottom of the page. Now, I am very pleased to introduce Wafa. Wafa, welcome to our program. Thank you so much for having me, Melissa, and thank you so much for the introduction. I'm really excited to be here with you tonight. And uh, I mean, hopefully I would be like it as informative as I can. <laughs> I'm I'm certain you will. Uh, I'm so excited to, to have you. Um, so many folks are unaware that Center for Inquiry runs this this program, the, uh, the translation project. Can you tell us about the translation pro project? What is it? Of course, yes. So uh, our project basically um, uh, intends to provide translations of secular literature uh, in four languages spoken in majority Muslim uh, countries. Uh, those languages are uh, basically uh, Indonesian or uh, Bahasa Indonesian, uh, Urdu language, uh, Farsi and um, uh, Arabic. Uh, the focus for now is on translating Richard Dawkins' writings and, and work in general. But uh, we intend to uh, open the project for to accommodate other secular uh, authors and uh, uh, work. I mean, uh, it, it's going to be open and uh, hopefully maybe by, I mean, we're currently we're still working on Darkness Writings, but uh, hopefully uh, very in the very near future, we're going to uh, open it to um, uh, translate uh, um, I think the work of uh, Yasmin Mohammed, the well-known Yasmin Mohammed, for instance, and her book Unveiled. Uh, but I, I'd like to say mm -hmm. that secular literature basically it refers to the uh, um, uh, uh, it refers to uh, uh, literature that's not uh, rooted uh, in religious beliefs or uh, traditions. Uh, in other words, it's not written within the framework of uh, religion or traditions, but it tackles, it describes, or criticizes that framework. And in Muslim majority countries, as you'll know, uh, most of the pedagogical and educational programs are designed uh, or created within the framework of creationism. And we assume uh, and we understand that science and evolutionary theory and scientific approaches are always vetted or scrutinized uh, within this framework. I mean, based on the creationist uh, standards. Uh, hence, not all uh, science books are easy um, accessible and not all the science knowledge is accessible to uh, Muslim majority countries. So through this project, uh, I mean, and uh, which is uh, free, uh, where we, we offer a free downloading options, uh, we tend to help uh, people get access. I mean, from those countries get access to uh, science books, starting, uh, like I said earlier, with the, the right writings and the work of uh, uh, Dr. Dawkins, of course. That is, um, that's amazing and laudable work. Um, so by bringing these, these insights to folks who normally wouldn't even maybe get a chance to, to, to read Dawkins in their own language, it's, it's almost its own, um, it's almost its own sort of leafleting in its own way. Um, sort of in in response to uh, the Christian version of that, um, how did you become involved in this in this project? 
uh, thank you, Melissa, for, for your question. I, I, would, I would like to say that, I, I mean, between parentheses, by the way, I have no idea how uh, people are eager uh, to read Richard Dawkins in Muslim-majority countries. Uh, they're really, really eager to get access to his work. I suggest that they are uh, deterred by either the means, uh, by either the lack of the information, because it doesn't, doesn't spread well. We may talk about this later. Or because, like I said, mm -hmm. I mean, everything is vetted, uh, politically speaking, in the political environment where, where they live. Uh, but everyone sure. is, is so really like people are really know of the person, know know his work, and they all are interested. I mean, in, even out of curiosity. And these people, I mean, they don't have to be like uh, believers. I mean, even non, I mean, in, uh, I'm sorry, uh, non-believers. Even like believers. I mean, they have this uh, um, 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 uh, desire to explore who is this this well bestseller uh, author that everybody is talking about. Um, I mean, just I mean to comment on what you you said earlier. But yeah, how did I get involved? With, so um, uh, I've uh, broken away from the religious shackles. It's been a while, probably five to six years, uh, though I uh, was so very much devoted uh, religious person, a super apologist, mm -hmm. and I might have fit very well in uh, the group of people who nowadays call themselves as reformists or the reformists mm -hmm. of the religion. So uh, this means that mm, even if I were so very much dedicated and religion to me was really a passion, like I was so very much passionate about it. Uh, and I, I do it and I practice it out of passion and I really like it. But I've never been extremist. I've never been on the conservative uh, um, side. And uh, I always understood religion as something very compatible with the human values and with whatever going on nowadays. It's very current, very contemporary. Uh, and um, uh, then, I mean, uh, ISIS happened, <laughs> and mm -hmm. I uh, I decided it was only at that point where I decided to read religious law and the jurisprudence um, carefully and push myself, push my cognitive abilities to think critically about what um, what what I, uh, I was going to read because before that just memorize and listen and uh, believe without thinking twice about it. That's how we were mm -hmm. educated. That's how we were brought, at least myself. But uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, as soon as they did that, actually, I mean, I, I had a question. I had some questions about the uh, divine justice or the justice of the divine. Uh, it didn't seem to me like there mm -hmm. is really a, um, a God who's really just. But I did not go like deep. I didn't think about it deeply. I didn't waste so much time on it. But then when I when I started reading the religious law and the jurisprudence and the uh, particularly Islamic legacy, uh, so the uh, I didn't waste too much time uh, before I, I quit it. I mean, the the moment I encountered and passed uh, the fir first gap, the very first gap, I was like, okay, I'm done. Uh, so. Uh, yeah. Of course, like so many people who quit their religion, uh, we go through a traumatizing loneliness thinking that we're alone and how we're gonna face this society, particularly that I chose to be very open and public since day one, because I'm a kind of person who cannot camouflage a uh, size of her identity. It's, it's not easy for me. I can't live with the double identities or camouflage much about, about who, who, uh, who I am. Um, and then, I mean, luckily I discovered the um, ex-Muslims of North America. Uh, I have to say that it was such a relief. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's a community, even though we do not agree on so many things on how to approach a certain net topics. But uh, when I found this community, it's like, OK, uh, ultimately, it's the same objective. And ultimately, it's the same fr framework of conceptualizing religion and and it was really again i can't stress this enough it was such a relief uh, but um i wanted to contribute uh concretely uh, to what i 
people always like to call a project of enlightenment and making sense. Uh, I've always wanted that to add something. And then uh, I, I'm, a, I'm an active person on Facebook because of my research. Uh, I mean, my dissertation was all on, on Facebook. That's my database. Uh, but then I have a Twitter where I keep a very, very low profile, almost a dead profile. And one day uh, the um, uh, a Twitter account of uh, Melissa uh, Krausik uh, propped up mm -hmm. and she was uh, looking for uh, translators uh, to help, help out with certain certain language. And, and she spoke about briefly about the translations project and, and how it's linked to Richard Dawkins. So I just messaged her. I don't know the person or anything. I, I don't know how what I did. I just messaged her and I asked if there, is, there would be an opportunity where I can uh, participate being um, a speaker of, um, of Arabic, particularly modern standard Arabic, and contribute something in, in that regard. I mean, it didn't take uh, Melissa too long to uh, message me back, and uh, she was talking to me about uh, uh, editing uh, the grad delusion in Arabic. Because uh, the, the grad delusion at that time, the editing process was kind of pending. And to me, it was my aha moment. I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, <laughs> this is wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, I was like just dreaming about this. It's, it's, now it's coming true. So, I, and despite the fact, like I said, like I do, I mean, I'm busy. I'm, I teach and uh, I have other things to, to do. I do I do research a lot because I like to, to, to do research, uh, linguistics research, basically. Uh, but to me, it was like, like, no, this is, I cannot turn this down. Regardless, like whatever, this is the opportunity. This is what I'm going to contribute to what I really want and what I've become passionate about. So I started by editing. Uh, I have to correct myself here. I started by co-editing uh, the Grad Delusion, and we got it published on the website, the Translations Project. A few months later, uh, Melissa contacted me again, and she was like, how about if you take charge of the entire uh, project? And I couldn't believe it. By the way, I'm still hallucinating about that. I'm really in, in charge of a project, of the translations project of Richard Dawkins. Like, I, I, I'm still like in awe, like, no, this is not true. <laughs> Uh, so I, I I accepted immediately. I mean uh, I mean this is this is where I mean I'm I couldn't believe like I see my my what I want to do um, with regard to uh, the enlightenment with regard to educating and guiding people uh, towards the uh, pathways of um, of making sense or of sense and science and reason and particularly towards discovering the danger of dogma concretiz concretizing. Uh, uh, in front of me. So um, I accepted um, immediately and uh, that was uh, 2019 uh, and that's how it started. So um, uh, I, uh, um, uh, I, I, fin I finalized one project uh, and uh, back in May, um, I started a new one, a new one and, uh, and that's with uh, translating the um, uh, four horsemen and uh, outgrowing god which uh, we're working on right now and uh, it's still an ongoing uh, project uh, so uh, this is one side but um, uh, i have to say that uh, translations in in general uh, like you introduced me melissa i mean it, it relates to uh, what I'm doing in academia, um, being a, a, a linguist or major in, in, in linguistics. So, um, and, and given that there are several linguistic approaches to translation, particularly uh, the one that focuses on meaning and um, uh, equivalence, um, slash semantist. Uh, so uh, this is something that relates to what I do. And I have to say that even though I'm not semanticist, I really, I, I, I'm like, I don't know what semantics is. I, I can, I mean, uh, uh, honestly say that, but uh, I enjoy hustling with the culture loaded words and uh, connotative mm -hmm. meanings and how to translate them. So, mm, uh, even though right now I'm not so very much involved in the translation work, like I'm not the one who's translating, but I have no idea how much I enjoy those uh, uh, questions or inquires or suggestions or discussions that the translators try to raise with me whenever they, they see something that's uh, um, 
this word and negotiating and discussing how to put it like so that it fits so it comes up um i mean uh, uh, the best way it can uh, culturally speaking and it stays faithful to the voice of the of the main author at the right. same time uh, those moments are like uh, are very very enjoyable to me i mean i receive those questions and inquiries and uh, discussions either from the translators or even from the readers of the books i mean i've received um from time to time i would receive a couple of emails like uh, what would you say this word in this paragraph would you ask the translator why did he put it that way i think being a native speaker of farsi that this is the right word to put so those moments are, are really like i really enjoy like i said i love uh culture loaded words and how to uh, handle them and tackle them uh when when they're translating in a different language and here we're talking about um, english arabic indonesian farsi or urdu mm -hmm. right um how often does that happen where you're just kind of going about your business you've had a personal revelation about you know your feelings about you know leaving religion and then have this particular your own special interest walk up and say hey let's 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 be friends let's do this um that's that's got to be tremendous how how amazing is that story um you mentioned that a couple of the titles that you have been working on um and that the translation project has has been um doing and then you also uh mentioned that you have a bunch of translators you have a you oh, yeah. have a team who who takes part in this project tell us about well, those translators Yes, I mean, um, uh, we have, uh, I have, I have an amazing team. Uh, I did not, um, I mean, I have, I have to be honest here again. So I did not establish this team. It was already established by pray, uh, by my uh, predecessors. Uh, but I add a couple of translators uh, later on um, to this. Um, they joined us uh, when I started the new project on the Four Horsemen and our growing rod. Uh, but it's an amazing team, Melissa. Uh, I love working they sound with amazing. each and every individual of uh, of this team uh, so all in all we have about um, 11 uh, translators slash editors and one uh, translation agency so uh i have uh, four arabic translators uh, so, uh one of those uh, one of the of those translators she, she, she's amazing she's excellent and i have to say between parents i'm so sorry i cannot name them or show their pictures because of the reasons that we can all assume and imagine, I mean, those are uh, most of them are uh, resident of Muslim majority countries, and it's not always safe or secured. Uh, but uh, um, I mean, I can talk about them. So we have four Arabic translators. Uh, I have an editor that I worked with for the Grad Delusion and other books. She, she's such an excellent and a professional. Um, translator and editor. And then uh, we added uh, for this project three more Arabic translators. Uh, and they are from a variety of countries, from Iraq, from Tunisia, from uh, Morocco. Uh, and they're all fond of Richard's work. They're all familiar with the Richard's work and the, uh, Dr. Richard uh, Dawkins' work. And they're all fond of it. And they've read a great deal of it. Mm. And they are, uh, um, I mean, they're so very much dedicated to the project. Uh, I have two Urdu translators, one individual and one agency. Uh, so far, I've been working with the agency, uh, with, only, with the, the uh, only, I mean, only with the agency, uh, but they are really professional, very communicative, very approachable. And, and, and again, I mean, they're all devoted and they want to contribute as much as, as they could. They, they would ask me, is there another, another book you would like me to, to, to add to translate, please keep us in the loop, please keep us updated. Um, I have four Farsi translators and those are, oh my gosh, I mean, when I talk, I don't want to even like I get emotional because they help me. They ask me if I need any help, even when I don't email them and ask them of anything. Well, do you need anything with the alignment? Do you need anything with the, uh, with the, like the font size that works best with the Farsi script? Uh, anything in this, anything in that? Uh, these people like, like, the Farsi translators, I mean, they would send me emails and they were expressing their passion about this project. And they don't want to be like um, mem and members of it. Like it's, it's, it's I mean, it's 
very very amazing group of people uh, and two indonesian i can't talk enough about them like this is so very much easy to approach so all the time on time i mean they've said they were the first to submit their work uh, very punctual very dedicated and so easy to approach uh, i mean this team i mean i wish i could mention their names i could say their names one by one but i i I know that, you know, I mean, unfortunately for the uh, yeah. sociopolitical reasons, I mean, I, I cannot mention them, but uh, um, these are, I can't thank them enough. I mean, they gave me a hand when I started, when I was still like trying to, uh, I mean, still lost, but I'm going to tackle this. I don't even direct the project. I'm going to lead this, uh, but I like it. I want to do it. I, I only have passion, but passion is not enough. They were there for me, mm -hmm. all of them, every single one of them. They all were there for me. Uh, I mean, it's it's an amazing group of work, very very amazing. Plus, I mean, some of them even offer to volunteer, particularly the Farsi translators. I mean, I have a I have a, a volunteer uh, who's also who's uh, working on the Four Horsemen right now, but also volunteers volunteers with me in advertising, trying to advertise for the project within the the Farsi um, um, speaking community or uh, uh, communities. Uh, such an amazing translator again like he's very very helpful and uh, i mean this i mean this person uh, he i mean i, I mean uh, he he puts a lot of effort at the expense of his time uh, he he puts a lot of um, dedication uh, at the expense of his, I mean, whatever he has. Whenever I reach him, I mean, he's there. So uh, he's an amazing, an amazing uh, fellow, if I may say. And uh, I think we are friends now. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really amazing <laughs> to work. And I like, love their dedication. And, and yeah, I mean, amazing team. It sounds like you have really got an incredible bunch of folks working for you. Are you accepting, uh, uh, are you looking for additional volunteers? Absolutely. And if Absolutely. so, how, how would someone contact you if that was something that they were interested in? Someone has language skills to share. Yes, I can share my email. Of course, they can email me. Uh, so I'll share my email on the chat room and uh, okay. I'll share my more than in my email and they can contact me at any time via my email, via the um, uh, Center for Acquiry email. Yes, I can share that. And um, I'll share also uh, the Twitter account. They can message me there. Uh, I'm, I'm very accessible. Yeah, I'm very accessible, of course. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Um, it really sounds like a, a incredible bunch of people to be involved with. I, I wish I spoke Farsi. <laughs> um, what um, I know you were mentioning the God delusion and you were um, working on out, outgrowing God, which is um, Richard's young, young adult um, or young, re young adult book, right? It's, it's geared more towards um, like a younger audience. Mm -hmm. um, what other titles have been translated? Uh, yes, so I'm gonna uh, here. I'm gonna uh, share um, one slide, if I may, uh, Melissa, uh, to show it for our it. audience Absolutely. for the books we've been working on so far, uh, and that doesn't include the current project. That doesn't include the Four Horsemen and the Rad Delusion. So I'm gonna share this uh, very quickly. Uh, let me see. Do you see it? We do. Okay, good. So, like I said, we um, translated about uh, 17 books. Uh, in Arabic, uh, we had The God Delusion translated, uh, The Blind Watchman and The uh, River Out of Eden. Uh, in Farsi, uh, we got The God Delusion, River Out of Eden, The Magic of Reality, uh, The Blind Watchman and The Greatest Show on Earth. In Indonesian, uh, we have The Blind Watchman, The Rad Delusion, uh, The Greatest Show on Earth, A River Out of Eden. And in Urdu, we have uh, River Out of Eden, The Rad Delusion, The Greatest Show on Earth, The Magic of Reality, and The Blind uh, Watchman. And, and again, I'd like to reiterate that um, uh, this is without the current project uh, where we're working on uh, The Four Horsemen and Our Growing Rad. So uh, those are the books we translated uh, so far. Uh, and I'm going to uh, show you, I mean, if you don't mind, Belisa, the uh, Translations Project website. So I think it's time to- uh, Please to do, yeah. With our audience. 
So uh, absolutely. Yeah. So you minimize this and share the other one. <laughs> okay. Good. So this, so this is, is translationsproject.org. Yes, this is translationsproject.org, and you see the four uh, tabs of the uh, four languages where we've been working on. Uh, and under each tab, like for instance, if I click Arabic, because that's the language I understand, I can navigate you through it. So you will see uh, the three books translated so far in Arabic and uh, PDF file. And again, I'd like to reiterate that the, load, uh, the downloading is uh, for free. Uh, for everyone, it's accessible for, for everyone. Um, and uh, we're going to add, uh, before I forget, we're going to add more um, tabs. I mean, as long as we, um, we keep translating, we're going we're gonna to add more uh, tabs, particularly uh, that um, I've started working on reviewing and um, uh, editing the uh, subtitles of the uh, uh, videos on Richard Dawkins' uh, YouTube channel of uh, reasons and, and science. Uh, so the idea is like to uh, edit those uh, videos uh, in the four languages uh, that we are working on, uh, and then uh, create another tab, another uh, web page uh, here, um, so that um, uh, people will have much more accessibility uh, to uh, the material, to that content on the on the uh, YouTube channel. So the idea is to create much more pathways or segues uh, to that content, to that material. You can go to it to, uh, in the YouTube channel, but for a better um, translation, uh, for the reviewed subtitles, probably in the future you will need to visit uh, this website to find to um, follow those videos or watch those videos. Yeah, that's that's very extent. I mean, already it's 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 a testament to the amount of work that has gone into this. Um, just taking taking a look at it, you can see the the level of care and and consideration that has gone on to the gone into this um what are, what kind of challenges do you encounter doing this type of work uh, the challenges okay so um i uh I have, I mean, I have different different types of challenges, but I'm gonna start with the maybe the least important ones, the least important challenges. Uh, so uh, the deadlines. Um, sometimes it's hard to stick to the deadline. So I sign a project to to finalize a project mm -hmm. at a certain a date, uh, but then uh, we find ourselves like. Uh, uh, forced to uh, extend the deadlines. Uh, but there is a reason why, I mean, we're very flexible with the deadlines because our translators, most of them are uh, volunteering for this project, meaning that they have other works, they have other commitments they are busy with. Uh, so uh, we understand like, and that, I mean, that they, sometimes there are schedule conflicts, sometimes they get um, busy with their work and we take this into consideration, but uh, uh, and we don't wanna lose our translators Translators, because like I said earlier, our translators, because like I said earlier, they're very professional and they're very dedicated to this. And it's very rare to find, it's not easy to find people who just not only professional, but dedicated. They want to do this, this specific work. They want to work on this specific content. Uh, so that's one, uh, one, uh, of, uh, one of the challenges, but I call it the least important challenge. It's not, it's not a big deal. And um, and the important thing is to deliver uh, the finest and the most decent outcome, a high quality outcome. And that's what uh, uh, we care about as a team. And so far, uh, so good. I mean, we have a very well translated uh, versions of all the, the books we've been working on. Uh, the Another uh, challenge, um, I mean, it's it's. Uh, this is related. It's more more linguistic, and it's related to the different approaches um, uh, that sometimes happen between the translator and the editor. Because I have to say that after the translation process, um, sometimes we edit the work. I mean, um, more than one time. Sometimes we we, um, we hire more than one editor, and we hear from more than one voice uh, and one approach. Mm -hmm. And at at times, I mean, occasionally there is this conflict, this tension. I mean, everybody has their own style, their own approach, approach, their own purposes, because everybody has their individual purpose of doing this work and their own background. 
so those negotiations uh, happen, uh, but we end up, we always, I mean, we need some extra time to resolve them, but we end up always with the middle ground. Everybody grows, grows out, <laughs> I mean, finalizes the work happily. Uh, but I like, by the way, this is the fun part of this work, is those, no, those discussions, those negotiations, I enjoy that. Even though like I would like to be like a conciliator, I have to play the role of the conciliator, by the way, being the, the manager of the project, but I like that. I learn yeah. from that. I learn from those approaches so much. I want to contribute. And I, I asked my some of my translators to take notes. And I was like, how about if you create a doc, like a, a word doc, or maybe uh, later on it's going to be uh, can edit it and format it somehow and add it to the translation, uh, the translations project website itself, uh, where we can highlight like the different approaches as you're dealing with these languages. And that's going to be helpful for future translators, uh, translators or editors that will be recruited in this project because this project is ongoing and they were like yeah excited about that like everybody has their own notes i mean now oh, this word should be said this way this style should be formed this way uh, those are the fun part but we need extra time extra effort but i always like i said earlier i care about the outcome and mm, uh, that's what matters. So, uh, for instance, uh, this happened, for instance, in the blood delusion. That's why it took like longer. My and I think if I understood it correctly, it was longer than than uh, the fixed deadline. Uh, and this happened very recently with the four horsemen. Uh, they found like some sort of discrepancy between the video, because if uh, for those who don't know, the fourth horseman is um, is also um, uh, available as a video on uh, on the uh, Richard Dawkins YouTube channel. And they were like listening to the videos and. Then reading from the text, I'm like, oh, not the same thing and not the same approach. And we would like to stick to the video because that speaks better. So we spend some time talking about that. And uh, I expect that more discussions are going to come with the four, horse, four horsemen in Farsi. <laughs> so, uh, but I, like I said, again, I appreciate those discussions. It's great, great discussions. And, and I learn from them, and everybody learns from them. Very um, educational. And, mm -hmm. uh, the editors uh, or the translators safety and security uh, it's another area of a challenge so how uh, obviously i mean before um, uh, publishing the work online uh, on the website i have to uh, go back to the editors and the translation ask them if they want to include their names or not uh, that's the must that's in our contracts uh, but uh, I also find, I mean, personally, I find it uh, also quite challenging um, when, when I hear from translators st stepping down out of this project because of safety reasons, nothing else, because of mm. their security. Uh, they do not yeah. elaborate, uh, I mean, further on how they are, that might be like they are in danger. Uh, but but they, they send me emails and they were like, we cannot work on this, I mean, at least for the time being, because of security reasons. So I don't need to go further, I don't need to ask for, for their questions. But I find it quite challenging. I mean, it's, it's really sad. It's also a sad reality. Right. Uh, so those are maybe, I mean, uh, the, the different different the types of, of challenges, maybe intrinsic uh, challenges to the uh, to the project. But what's the most important challenge is marketing, marketing and marketing and marketing and advertising process. This is where um, I still have uh, things to figure out. I still have to learn uh, the best uh, marketing strategies and advertising strategies and uh, how to spread the word um, in the most effective way. Because uh, like I said, I mean, these books have been down, have been downloaded in about 86 countries around the world. So 86 wow. countries read Richard Dawkins in the four languages. I mean, uh, as per the last report, uh, but uh, still, I mean, you see some discrepancy. So, for instance, uh, the highest number, the highest rate of downloading happens in in, uh, in Indonesia, obviously, or in uh, Urdu-speaking uh, countries countries uh, but it's still for instance uh, arabic downloading i find it still low like the, like the our readers from the middle east are from north africa uh, the, i mean I, I don't want to say that they do not read i'd rather want to say that they mm. do not know about this project and they don't have uh, the an mm. required accessibility how to access this project and here i mean where things have become like um, uh, quite a challenging and I still need to figure out how to disseminate and how to propagate and spread the word. I mean, in this regard, to increase uh, readership in those regions, like I said, Middle East and uh, uh, and North Africa. Um, I mean, 
so far, these are the main challenges that I've, I've faced since I joined the uh, the project. Uh, but everything is, I mean, with with love, with dedication, with passion, like I said, and with the great team I'm working on. I mean, we end up resolving things. I mean, I, I have a strong uh, faith that things get resolved eventually, uh, and in the in the better way possible, in the best way possible. Yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, well, the, some of the challenges seem like, you know, absolutely the the bit that I keep thinking of because you mentioned it a couple of times is having those conversations that are about those politically charged words and the translation of these things in in the social context. That is the that is the piece of this that, like for me personally, that is what I would really want to be in the weeds about because yes. of those those variations in meaning that come from you know that come from cultural aspects etc that's that's deeply fascinating yes i have to light it sorry turn on my light no worries <laughs> sorry. um i would like to um ask you a little bit about process before we open it up to q a um if folks don't mind if you don't mind and since we lost you for a little bit, we might go over just a couple minutes to get a few more um, audience questions in, if that's all right with you. Of um, course, yes. Just, you know, I don't want to miss, I don't want to miss anything. Um, but I, I, I'm curious about your process. Like, what's the step-by-step -step on, on a translation like this? How do you even begin? Okay. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is a, a very good technical question, and we have to clarify it. Yes, so uh, there are different steps, and that starts uh, basically by looking um, if there is. I mean, we start by um, uh, searching if there is any official translation of whatever uh, book out there, if the book has been already uh, translated by somebody else, not from our project. Uh, and then we see if the uh, translation has been published somewhere. Uh, in that case, we, I mean, we do not, we do not need to work on the book again. But if there is an official translation but not published, we, uh, published, we may approach, uh, if we find a certain way, if we find a way to reach out to the translator and see if we can obtain it from him, if he's interested on, um, interested in publishing with us. Um, and if they say yes, uh, we take the translated version to the editing um, stage. There is an editing stage, sometimes more than one editing stage. Uh, once the editing is done, uh, there is the finalization stage, and that's my work uh, where I have to uh, check uh, the cover page, the font, technical stuff, the cover page, the font size, mm -hmm. whether it, if it fits or not, uh, the alignment, the watermark, uh, uh, I mean, these, these technical stuff. Um, in mm -hmm. case the book has not been translated at also, we uh, just assign the book to our translators uh, and then uh, we take it to an editing stage. Uh, like I said earlier, sometimes we hear from one more than one voice, more than one, we hire more than one editor. Uh, and one, once everything is clear and it's ready to go, uh, we uh, take the book and send it back to the translator because, or the translators because they have to have the final say. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. we acknowledge their time and efforts. Uh, and we wanna, um, I mean, uh, um, uh, like, uh, like I said earlier, create a uh, middle ground where all the members, all the participants agree on one version, for instance. They come to an agreement mm -hmm. of what version should be published. Uh, and then, uh, the finalization uh, stage, like I said, that's that's my work. Uh, and uh, once I mean everything is clear, I post. I, I, I we post the uh, the uh, translated uh, work, the translated book, and I go to the advertisement or the marketing stage. So I would be uh, spreading the word and, and sharing the information with the people I know. Or on on Twitter account that I just created for the um, translations project. I'll I'll share it on the chat room as well. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and we keep going. We keep like advertising for uh, for the book, for the current translated, for the newly translated ver books, uh, as well as for the old ones. Uh, that that's what we sure. usually do on social media or in the advertisement process. Yeah, mm. that that is amazing work. That's incredible. And then and then your 
um, just being able to switch gears between the different uh, both publications and then the different language groups and just even logistically that sounds like that sounds like just a lot to to be thinking about and keeping all straight so it's it's extremely commendable and we're and we're very gracious to you and your team for all of the work that you're doing um now i would like to open our um conversation up and and ask some of the uh, top questions from our question and answer um tab okay. so let's see here so the top question that we've gotten is how much do these translations cost and who pays you <laughs> okay so uh to download the translation i have already clarified that it's for free uh, but mm -hmm. for the uh, translation for our translators uh, we pay them by by word so it depends on how many words each uh, book has. And also uh, each translator has their own rate. Um, they, they charge differently for the translating and the editing process. They have different rates. Uh, so again, it depends on the number of words and, and it depends on uh, the um, uh, translator's uh, uh, rate. So uh, um, we usually were flexible and they are flexible because like I said, they're driven by their passion and dedication to, to the content to this material more than anything else uh, so sure. uh, um, i mean it varies it varies uh, mm -hmm. it's, uh, the, the, we pay our translators and editors dependent but many of our translators and this is the good thing many of them they're just volunteers mm -hmm. they choose to do it for free they dedicate time and put their efforts just for free because they love richard dalton's work that's it they, they do it for free <laughs> they don't they don't charge us anything That's... and and even when we ask them i mean how much would you like us to charge you they would say no i mean we love to do this work i mean there is no need That's... it's our passion again <laughs> yeah yeah that's it that's passion for you um now what um are, what are the plans to uh, translate into other languages? I think you kind of spoke about this at the beginning, but do you, are there, um, like what languages are next for translations? Uh, for now, I mean, uh, we do not have a plan to translate in other languages, but we are thinking about it for very uh, for future projects. Uh, we had uh, proposals to translate into Somali language, for instance. Uh, uh, we had mm -hmm. uh, proposals to uh, translate into other varieties of the Indonesian, because there are many dialects of the Indonesian language itself. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we have we had even a proposal to translate these books into. Uh, 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 the uh, colloquial uh, Arabic varieties, <laughs> because nowadays, I mean, they are in the process of standardization are those colloquial, their, their, their languages no more are just spoken varieties. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have different proposals. Uh, we're going to think about them uh, for, for future, but for now, we're just targeting the um, uh, languages that are spoken in the uh, Muslim majority countries. And those are the four languages I mentioned earlier. Right. Um, now, we've also gotten some questions about what what types of, of works that the Translations Project is interested in, like what the focus of, of the translations are. I mean, folks are suggesting things like, you know, graphic novels or, or I know that you are doing some work on the Richard, Docker, Richard Dawkins video um, video um library that is available on youtube and the translations of the subtitles on those videos yes um, are there any sort of other media types or things that you're thinking uh, that the project is thinking of branching into Yes, I mean, this is my future goal, by the way, this is what I, where I want to take this project to. It's like besides Richard Dalton's uh, books and besides incorporating maybe other secular authors and writing work, uh, I even want to open it to translate in papers, scientific papers. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to open it to uh, translating um, uh, speech scripts uh, by Richard Dawkins or all those uh, great secular um, thinkers uh, out there. Uh, uh, plus also um, the change the genre, different 
title different genres like children books or uh, novels, uh, um, uh, manuscripts. Uh, and like I said, I mean, now I'm, I'm working on reviewing the uh, YouTube channel videos. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm very open to all kinds of genres. Uh, I want to take it to um, another level. So not just books uh, or not even just novels, but even papers, scientific papers, like I said, scripts, uh, speeches, debates, uh, transcribing debates and translating them. And I think uh, creating this type of content at the time being is really, really important. Why is that? Because it's highly in demand. Everybody is now nowadays is questioning uh, religion. Everybody nowadays is much more open to question on, on dogma, to question about uh, um, uh, science, uh, about, uh, uh, I mean, reason and logic. I mean, I, th I think this is the time. And, and everyone in the world, particularly like in Muslim majority countries with the uh, technology and communication and, and, and the internet, I mean, more and more interest in this regard uh, is, I mean, um, um, a volume um, is a revolving and is um, a developing. So yeah, why not? This is what I what I want to take the project to. So not just stick to uh, books uh, or scientific books, but uh, like I said, the secular literature project. So it, it should incorporate all kind of genres and all kind of a, a variety of literature. Which is uh, abs which would be amazing to to have even more even more of these res resources available for folks. Um, Absolutely. Now, yeah. <coughs> that's, that's tremendous. And uh, now um, we have questions about these charged words that you mentioned. Um, what are some examples of such a loaded, a loaded word or term? And what are the procedures that your team use to interpret them into other languages? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, well, I, I well. Mm, <sighs> Well, the more, I mean, and what I remember, the most recent, what I can remember right now, what I can remember right now is, for instance, um, I mean, we had, we even had discussion about the word uh, delusion in Arabic, for instance, uh, and, mm -hmm. uh, and how to translate that, because it has different, uh, and w w I mean, some of the uh, translators, which, which I, I, I believe in their work, I mean, they still have issue with how we translated the word, but also, again, I take into consideration other approaches. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, for instance, now how to deluge, um, uh, how to translate, I'm sorry, the word wahm, which means the delusion or um, hallucination is it wahem is it tawahem uh, i mean things along those lines for instance uh, this is this is one example uh, another example I, I do not remember i don't remember the exact um, uh, word but it came from uh, from f f it was from uh, Urdu, and it was about a placement of an adjective before a noun or after a noun. So some group were like, "Well, this adjective should go before the noun," and others were like, oh, "It has to be a, a postnominal; it has to come after the noun because it changes the meaning." And again, I mean, uh, we had some discussion with the agency, and they were like, "Okay," that they reviewed it, they passed it through a number of reviewers, and we come up with a conclusion that we're gonna ke keep whatever I mean was uh, translated. The, initially so uh, oh. yeah a question as such and inquiries as such i'm sorry i don't have examples of my mind but a, a bunch of emails like that yeah yeah that's uh, that is um the part of linguistics and and um just the concept of translating one one language especially something that has like richard's writing has is there's an art to it there's a there's a um um a humor to it and it, it there's a lot of just cultural like britishness Absolutely. in it that that yes, is yes. that is um yes i can yes. imagine translating yes. those things so yes, that's fascinating Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I agree. There were, I remember there were discussions about how to translate satire in Richard Dawkins' book, The Grad Delusion. And that's why I mean, it took us some time. I mean, when I, when I read different um, uh, versions of editing of The Grad Delusion for self, I was like, I mean, I laughed at one and I felt like it was much more close to the author's uh, voice than another one. I was like, maybe this is the satire. This is what I hear. This is what I feel the satire. I mean, and I know that in the original version, I mean, this is how he, how he expressed it uh, uh or even i mean uh, like 
what makes a good translation, by the way, isn't, I mean, a, a good translator is the one who can catch even, I mean, when there is ambiguity or opaque, like they have to translate that, make, I mean, show that in the, in the targeted, la uh, target language uh, that, uh, uh, that ambiguity or opaque or harsh style. I mean, and the reader has to think uh, when, when they get, I mean, the, the, the translated version, they don't have, the translation has to become totally invisible. And it mm -hmm. has to uh, flow, I mean, flow as if it's written originally from the beginning in the target language. And, and that's, I think, right. what makes the, uh, a good translator. Without, without, of course, um, without uh, ignoring uh, the author's voice, the author's vocabulary, and the author's style. So both, the, a good translation is what creates a, a middle ground, or we can see the source, uh, text-oriented, or, or uh, uh, version, and at the same time, uh, the reader. And uh, again, I mean, uh, I, one of the, whenever I'm, I'm editing a translation, I mean, the first thing I focus on is like, does it, is, was the translator doing the work with the reader in mind? with mm -hmm. the bilingual or with the, the, the target language reader in mind. If that's there, then other things are just technical or mechanical or grammatical and easy to handle. I mean, easy to, to sure. fix. Uh, but if they, I don't see like being, for instance, when I edited the Grad Delusion, and if I didn't see like the book is written to an Arabic reader, Mm -hmm. uh, like myself, I mean, mm, I would, I would not like uh, uh, anything that I would it's, like seem it to me awkward to me or doesn't speak to my rhetoric, particularly the question of rhetoric as an Arabic uh, speaker. And then I would, I would like highlight that maybe we need to negotiate this. Maybe we need to go right. over this again, uh, because I mean, I didn't see myself in it as a reader. Uh, so yeah, all these uh, tricks, all these. Um, uh, all these uh, uh, ideas and concepts, uh, and uh, I mean, has to be uh, taken into consideration when uh, the cultural text, the cultural context, when when we don't uh, doing the translation work, in order, of course, to obtain a good translation. Yeah. Right. Like, no, that that makes that makes perfect sense. Like, just the the especially you, you know you you did mention the rhetoric bit, like coming into yes. just your own. <laughs> Like it has to appeal to the gestalt of your own language in order for it to feel right. Um, fluid and, and it then, flows accordingly, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Now we have a question about if you have knowledge of, are there other types of literature that, are, that aren't translated because of so-called radical content like um, LGBTQ stuff or feminist um, topics? Do you have knowledge of that? Like, uh, you mean uh, books that were not allowed to be translated mm -hmm. uh, in in Muslim majority countries? Yeah. Uh, well, um, well, nothing on top of my head right now. I'm so mm -hmm. sorry for that, but uh, I'm sure that there are there are. Uh, well, I know, for instance, of. Uh, um, uh, I don't know books that are not translated, but I know that, for instance, books uh, of Muna at Tahawi, the famous journalist, uh, are mm -hmm. forbidden in some uh, Muslim majority countries, uh, as far as Arabic speaking uh, countries are concerned. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, they they are they are uh, I mean we can have them I believe in Tunisia we can have them in Morocco but I don't think that they are accessible in Egypt her own country and also in some Gulf countries and I think she brought this one time and how like people cannot have access to her work because of what she's doing and because of of her approach even though I mean Muna Tahawi is is Muslim is still a religious figure not not mm -hmm. an, an unbeliever for instance but because of the content of course she speaks a lot about uh, sexual freedom and LGBTQ rights and, and all those uh, still unfortunately controversial topics within Muslim majority countries mm -hmm. yeah certainly now, um, do you have you run into issues with governments blocking our website or the translations website? Uh, so far, no. Uh, so far, everything is flowing uh, well, very well, news. smoothly. I mean, and I hope it continues as such. <laughs> we don't want any trouble. No, mm -hmm. so far, no. Uh, nope. No, I mean, uh, uh, plus, I, I feel like whatever we're doing, I mean, it's, it's very objective. 
I, I don't know why. I mean, it would be flagged or uh, f I mean, it's, it's really objective. We're doing hardcore stuff. We're doing critical thinking. We're translating uh, thought provoking material. So that's it. But we're not. Uh, I mean, I don't see where we are crossing any uh, any red line. I mean, it's it's. Uh, we're doing scientific work. I don't know. I mean, uh, what government is going to stop that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, how about from religious institutions? Uh, so far, no. So far, uh, I mean, I expect. I expect that uh, if I become much more popular on social media, which I'm not, <laughs> but if I get uh, this, I may receive some uh, I mean, things as such from religious people. I may <laughs> receive comments uh, that, oh, what we're doing might not be like, well, that doesn't sit well, and why are we doing this? And like I said, the translator who emailed me, and she was like, I cannot work with Richard Daw on Richard Dawkins' writing anymore. It doesn't mean that she's given up on, transla on the translation work, but specifically, Richard Dawkins' work. And I understand her, her background. I understand where she was uh, coming from. So uh, because of security reasons, I mean, she clearly mm -hmm. said that. So I understand, I, I, I mean, I understand where she, uh, she's coming from. And, uh, and I understand that probably, I mean, if anybody who knows about Richard doesn't in her surrounding doesn't want her to, to come close to that material to that literature mm -hmm. uh, uh, but as far as this the translations project growing as far as the website and the twitter which is still like growing or as far as myself even though like i said i'm very public and popular about my irreligiosity mm -hmm. uh, uh, even at work, even at my other work, my teaching work, uh, I haven't received any uh, any problem, any trouble so far. I mean, hopefully it continues. Well, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep hoping for that to continue to be the case. We don't want anybody hassled. It seems to be like that the that the issues of of being shut down seem to be uh, on more of a like a personal, intimate partner, uh, family kind of basis more than an institutional basis is what i'm hearing yes yeah. yes okay yeah yeah well i mean like certainly we don't want to put any of our translators in, <laughs> in any kind of jeopardy that would not be the that's not the thing that's not Absolutely, it Absolutely. yeah <laughs> um now a question about translating for you do do translators have to be certified a certified translator to work with the project yes yeah, some of them are certified the translators mm -hmm. were hiring. I mean, uh, some of them are certified, uh, and some of them I have no doubt in their uh, um, qualifications uh, because they've done translation mm -hmm. work before and uh, it was published. So uh, I uh, really trust what they uh, they uh, have delivered and they, what they're gonna deliver so far. Uh, so. Um, um, like I said, many, some of them are certified. They send us their certifications. They do the, that's their work. I mean, they're translators. That's their work. Like, like, like the people who worked at the agency or the Indonesian translators. That's their uh, basic uh, how they gain their li their livelihood. That's their basic mm -hmm. job. Uh, but other translators, I mean, uh, even though they're not certified, um, they've done other work in translation. They've published translated work. And uh, I know some of their publications, like poetry or li in literature in general, or novels. And that's why, I mean, I uh, recruited them and I'm, I'm working with them. So I trust what, what, they, uh, th what they will deliver and what they delivered for. Yeah. That's, yeah, that seems, you know, <laughs> what, what works. That's, that's what works. Yeah, now, um, I mean, I'm I'm not certified myself when I work on Red Delusion, and uh, uh, but I don't I don't think why I needed certification. Being um, I mean, because obviously my major helped me because I'm a linguist, so uh, I mean, presumably I know about all these mechanical and technical and, uh, and, and stuff, and I know about the theory. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, I, I've translated work into um, from French to English, and it was basically scientific work. Like I had no voice in it as a translator, because uh, I've been working with these papers uh, of um, uh, 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 scientists who, whose major is in geography, is it geographic? So, uh, um, and uh, so far, and they've been published so far. My, they, they, they published my translation, so that's fine. <laughs> If they've been published in scientific journals, so that's like a validation for my work. Yeah, yeah, I suppose that's that'll do. That's that, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> we'll accept it. Yeah. Um, does that does anybody else have any questions to add this evening? Um, 
I know that it is a busy time of year, even though we are secular people. A lot of us are still kind of, whether it's solstice or or whether our families still kind of participate in, in uh, Christmas traditions, um, regardless of our status, I know that it is a, a busy, busy uh, time. Um, oh, I do have a question that was submitted earlier from one of your translators actually and that was which of your which of the works that you've been um working on is your personal favorite oh uh i've so i um uh, i've been working on uh, revitalizing and documenting tamazight uh, language commonly known as verbal language uh, within the context of Tunisia, where Tamazight language has been uh, classified uh, based on the ethnologue as a, an endangered language. Uh, it was a, the language was about uh, to disappear uh, should the revolution of 2011 uh, didn't happen. But luckily it happened and we're much more um, a freedom of um, speech. Uh, uh, I mean, actually, basically, that's one of the solid achievements of the entire revolution is the freedom of expression uh, within the context of Tunisia, which allowed us to, uh, we researchers, to work on, to work on uh, the multi-ethnic um, uh, component of the country. Uh, of these uh, of these uh, uh, components, so there is the Atamazigh component, which uh, before 2011 was even a taboo question, because uh, when you bring up the question of indigenity or indigenous people or Tamazigh language, uh, you're deemed a separatist and someone who's calling for a, a division and um, a trouble. Uh, like I said, luckily the, the revolution happened, so I started working on the language. I I identify myself as a Tamazigh, but uh, but unfortunately I. Don't speak your words. Uh, why is that? Because of the uh, Arab Islamic ideology, the nationalist ideology, and the pan Arabist, which uh, have brainwashed, if I may say, the entire society into one homogeneous identity, and that's uh, the Arab Islamic identity. So I had to wait till 2011 when I discovered that I'm not Arab, I've never been an Arab, I'm actually a Tamazigh, I'm indigenous to the land, and my language was. Um, and the edges of disappearance of endangerment. I started by mapping up the vowel system of the language, looking at the influence of the language on the on my mother tongue, which is Etunsi. And here I would like to open a parenthesis and correct one thing. Uh, there is no native speaker of modern standard Arabic on earth, not even a single one. Uh, the mother tongue are varieties of other languages influenced by Arabic. Some of them are highly influenced by Arabic. Others are minimally influenced by Arabic, uh, but not a single native speaker of Arabic language on earth. And this is a scientific truth. This is a fact. Uh, the native speakers or mother tongues are named after the the the, uh, the, the, the state's names, like a Tunisi after Tunisia or a Moroccan variety after Morocco. And these languages are in the process of mm -hmm. standardization uh, because they've become much more in use, uh, much more uh, in not, not only on social media, but even in literature and in, in the journalism. I mean, we started using our mother tongues. Um, Arabic is a second language, scientifically speaking or linguistically speaking for all the Arab speakers. Uh, some people may not agree. Uh, they may say that that's uh, the mother tongue. It's not your mother tongue if you didn't grow up speaking that language and you had to wait till you till you went to school to start <laughs> speaking it and writing it. Uh, what your mother tongue is what you started bubbling. The mother tongue is the the language you start uh, you start using at the bubbling stage and that's the mm. variety the iraqi variety the tunisian variety the moroccan variety uh, i like to use the variety because i'm a sociolinguist and i think it's a very fair term uh, can it solve the tension between the dialect and, and the language so just of all all these Languages are just varieties, and all uh, these dialects are languages, and all languages are, are dialects. So I prefer. Uh, that's why I tend to uh, to use the term uh, variety. Uh, my research, like I said, is revitalizing. It's focused on revitalizing Tamazight language. Uh, I switched recently, and particularly for my dissertation, to focus on the discourse because I have not found uh, good funding to go back to um, to Tunisia and document the language. Um, and do, um, and if do field work in the sense, but I did an online, what is called um, online um, ethnography. Uh, so I've been mm. watching Facebook 24 seven and uh, 
finding data on, on Facebook. Uh, when I say Facebook, I mean uh, data delivered or um, produced by um, uh, Tunisian Imaziran. Imaziran is the plural of Amazigh. Uh, and those are either speakers of the language or those who identify themselves as Amazigh, either culturally or ethnically or genetically uh, or whatever. Uh, so this is, I mean, briefly my, my research. <laughs> It sounds incredible. I am a sort of armchair fan of linguistics myself and just the the what you were saying about calling calling the the languages the the varieties a variety versus a, a dialect and I, I just could I could speak to you all evening. Wafa, this is this uh, is tremendous. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I do need to get our um, our audience members on their way this evening. Thank you so much for joining us and having this incredible uh, conversation. I'm uh, apologies for all of the technical difficulties. It's a thing that happens when we're doing things yeah. on the internet. Thank you so much for your patience. Those of us, uh, those of you who who, are, who have stayed to the end. Um, please do consider in your end of year giving, supporting uh, Center for Inquiry's mission, especially this incredible translations project and the work that they're doing um, under some pretty intense circumstances in some of the cases of, of our incredible translators. Do, um, do have a safe and um, healthy holiday. Uh, stay safe, get that vaccine when you can, you. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this has been Melissa and Wafa. And thank, thank you very, very much. much, Jen, for technical assistance. Yeah, thank All you right. so much. Thank, thank you. you, everyone. Yeah. And Goodbye. good evening. Have a great holiday. Bye. 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 <laughs>